Welcome to the Working Tools Masonic Podcast, where today will be part two of our discussion of York Rite Masonry. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren all, welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, a casual conversation around Freemasonry. First, it's important to note that our opinions and thoughts are our own and do not reflect those of our Grand Lodge or respective craft or concordant bodies. Please connect with us and ask questions, either here on YouTube or on our Facebook page. We'd also appreciate a thumbs up and especially any comments on our videos. Masonic podcast. Today we're discussing York Rite Masonry. I'm one of your hosts, Matt Apple. I'm a Mason here in the Grand Lodge of Washington. And we have with us uh, two of our co-hosts, David Colbeth, who's also here in Washington, and Stephen Chung, who's a Mason up in the Grand Lodge of British Columbia in the Yukon. And we have with us two very special guests. We have a worshipful brother, John Smiley, who's ambassador to Washington from the Grand Chapter of Royal Arch Masons International. And he's been in the Grand York Rite bodies in Indiana and South Dakota and Washington in a, in a few different roles. And we have Alan Akehurst, who is Grand Chaplain for the Royal Arch of British Columbia in the Yukon and on the Grand Council of Royal and Select Masters uh, and Knights Templar of Canada and Grand Deacon for the Grand Lodge of British Columbia in Yukon. So thank you all again, our, our guests, for being here with us today to discuss York Rite Masonry. And talk, uh, about, talk about busy guys. I thought I was busy, but these guys are really busy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I, I'm guessing that not all of their titles were actually in those introductions. I bet. I bet there's about 85 <laughs> other things that could be listed there if I know these guys. John John would let me make a list. He said, "I said, okay, just give me the last one or at least the current one." <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought you know York right was something that you did when you had one more Masonic free night in the week. <laughs> sure. No, no, no. That's Scottish, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think David had a really good question to start with. I, I was curious. While we were we finished the last show on a great topic, we were talking about the different areas of uh, the different descriptions of the different degrees and different bodies. And so, if you wanted to elaborate on that, you can. But ultimately, I'd like to know kind of what what caused you to to join York Right. I know John said earlier in the show that you know, this is just what you did. And this, you know, his, his mentors said, this is the next step. And so he did it. And a lot of us do that, honestly. Uh, it's one of the reasons I joined Scottish Rite. And one of the reasons I got a petition for York Rite for Royal Arch. Uh, but why, why did you join? Why do you stay? Alan, how about you? You want to go ahead? What, what, what caused you to begin other than your mentorship? Maybe it is just the mentors ahead of you. Um, I was basically recruited uh, into York Rite from my craft lodge right after I got there. Uh, I, um, I was initiated past and raised in, uh, uh, in Vancouver in the lower mainland and immediately moved to the Okanagan. And uh, after being in the lodge for a short time, I got recruited to go into Royal Arch because it met in the same place. And uh, that ended up with me being the worshipful master of St. George's Lodge and the first principal um, of the Kelowna Chapter Royal Arch at the same time. <laughs> back in that back in 1984-5. That's how long ago that was. Um, the next step for me would have been to go to Knights Templar, but unfortunately it met on a Wednesday night that was the work night for me, so I couldn't. So after uh let's be 10 years, I decided I needed some more, so I joined Scottish Rite. <laughs> and then my job changed, and I retired. Um, and so that night was free, so I did preceptory. And then um, I uh, was asked by the same guys that I'm meeting everywhere else to join cryptics, and I thought that was something new to learn, so I would do that. And uh, after that, they've been basically invitational things so and now i think alan has a five night a week masonic schedule 
Just one night a week. Just one night a week. Yeah. Well, um, the cryptic, the Red Cross at Constein meets uh, only three times a year. Uh, cryptic only meets four times a year. Um, I think maybe five. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, our, that means you can't miss them. Yeah. <laughs> So in, in our in our last segment, John was talking about how a lot of times in in at least in Washington, uh, and a lot of the organizations he and York right he belongs to, that they end up talking about the blue lodges. Is that do you find that similar in Canada as well, or what what how do your meetings go? Is it a little more a little more staunch, or what is it? How does your how do your meetings flow? Um, the the meetings don't uh, specifically deal with uh, what's happening in Craft Lodge. Um, in in most of the York Ride bodies to which I belong, the, the, the Royal Arch and Preceptory and um, Cryptic Council, we we all do work for one another. So whenever we've got degree work coming up uh, or installations or anything like that, there's a discussion about, okay, who can do what for whom? Uh, but with, res with respect to Craft Lodge, um, we're active in our craft lodges, but we wouldn't, there'd be some discussion about what's happening in craft lodge, but it would be some event that's coming up. Um, for instance, our first principal right now happens to be the district deputy grandmaster. So we'll have a, you know, he's got a meeting here or there. So we'll mention that, but it's I only think, a mention. I think we know who that is. <laughs> yes, I think you do. <laughs> he, was just, he was just on our show, and, yeah. and we we happen to have a seated a seated uh, district deputy grandmaster. I'm not sure if he's to your right or to your left, but Matt Apple is our only is four more of, months. Only four more months. Not that he's counting, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John. What what's your experience? What it, what has caused you to to join, other than the mentorship, but also what's caused you to stay? Oh, I just think uh, you know if you're if you're if you really are into lodge and masonry. You just want to find all, all you can about it. And you end up uh, not so much, do I want to do something next? It becomes a, what do I want to do next? And um, of course, you know, everybody you know is in one or both, you know, one or the other or both Scottish and, and York, right? And for me, the York, I did York right first because they were more local. And because like I said, uh, you, you always saw the guys um, from the York right there helping you with the degree work. And so after I was, you know, as I was going through the officer line, uh, Virgil and a couple of others pulled me over and said, you see all the guys coming and helping? It's because at the York right meetings, we talk about what's going on in the district and who needs to help and who should be there at that meeting helping talk about it. Because uh, I was, I was, you know, I, I was traveling to other lodges and, uh, I think I'd, when I lived in Indiana, I did senior deacon in 18 or 20 different lodges for degree work. So um, I was going and doing, and they said, well, if you come to York, right, you'll have a better understanding of where you're needed and when. Of course, the wife didn't like it very much, but, you know, one <laughs> night a month, what's it going to be? So, um, but yeah, and, you know, again, it's just, uh, you get to know the guys and, and, uh, you like being around them, so if that's where they're going to be on Tuesday, then you join so you can be there on Tuesday. Hmm. Uh, you know, you, you make great friends in masonry, and, you know, you like hanging around with your friends. So if that's where your friends are going to be, that's where you're going to be. So, Alan, Alan you alluded that there was one of the – is the college, I think you called it, that is supposed to be kind of the educator of the group, and I think we have that in the U.S. as well. <clears throat> uh, so – like in Scottish Rite, there's a lot, of, there, there's a few degrees that are emulated and then there's many that are, uh, what's the word? They're spoken basically. Communicated, yeah. Communicated there. That's a better word. <laughs> uh, and, and so is it, I remember my Royal Arch degrees, it was a huge production and I think they, uh, they emulated every degree. I think, I don't think there was any that were communicated. And so is it like that with York Rite in general that they're mostly emulated or is it, are there some that are communicated or how does that work? There are none that are communicated. It's, it's similar to craft. The degrees are, uh, they're put on. Yeah. Right. There, there the are only, no, 
there's no degrees that I'm aware of that I've come across in the primary um, York Rite bodies. So if you were talking um, like Knight Templar priests, I think they've got, I don't know, 30 degrees or something. They only work in one and they only do two. And they don't even exemplify or sorry, communicate the others. They're just oh, they don't. There. No. But that's that's the only body that I know of that communicates. It does that has degrees that they don't do anything with. So, so, so why do they, is it just further education or why do they exist? Was it, I mean, I know, <clears throat> so at least in the U S I assume it was Canada too. If you really dig deep into the history of masonry and I'm going to pull back a, a blanket, they may not want to know about, but degrees were created so that guys could make money, honestly. <laughs> and, you know, a person wanted to, he was a Mason or thought he was a Mason or wanted to be a Mason. And so he created degrees and they would travel around the country uh, and, and, and sell, basically sell Masonic degrees. And so is that, an idea of how, where those came from, or was it, do you have any idea where they came from? No, I think this is based more on the, the English model. Um, the, 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 the multiple degrees, uh, for the most part, I don't think exist in the English system with the exception of Knight Templar priests. And I have no idea, um, what's involved in all the degrees that lead up to the two that you actually work in. Or, John, do, you, or, do you know John? Uh, so I know in the United States, the Allied Masonic degrees is where they put all of the old degrees that nobody does anymore. Um, <laughs> and what, what's the name of that body that produces the Collectiana every year? I can't think Allied, of it. Allied Masonic degrees. Oh, that is Allied Masonic yep. degrees. AMD. Um, and they meet annually in uh, uh, they used to meet in Washington, D.C. for Masonic Week. Now they're in Alexandria, Virginia, I believe, um, first or second weekend in February. It just ended. Um, but the Allied Masonic degree has a whole bunch of different degrees, and most uh, bodies will pick one or two that they like to do. Um, I was a member of an Allied Masonic degree in Indiana, where I believe they put on every degree uh, last time I heard. Uh, they picked a new one every year to put on, and of course they did the ones that you're required to do. But then they just get the book out, and everybody'd learn a part, and they'd put on a new one every year. So do you so, do you have to be a York Rite Mason to be part of Allied Masonic degrees, or is it? You have to be chapter. You have to be Royal Arch in order to join the, and it's not invitational. If you want to join, you're you're welcome to petition. Some of the degrees in the United States are are invitational. Most of them are not. Uh, Knight Templar Priest is um, York Rite College is um, KY Red Cross. Is, yep, Red Cross. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if Red Cross is invitational or not. Um, <clears throat> I am, I'm a member, but uh, I think it is. I think it's invitational if I remember correctly. I think you have to. It's invitational it. here. Yeah. Just to clarify something real quick about the degrees you were saying, um, uh, emulated versus communicated. So communicated would be me reading out of a book to somebody, Hey, this is what the, this degree was about, but you don't actually see it. Right. When right. you say emulated, is that like in the, in the blue lodge degrees where somebody Put does the whole thing, or is it kind of like more like in Scottish, right? Where they have one exemplar and then they, the other three people watch kind of thing. Emulated just means that it's put on, in full form, it doesn't necessarily mean whether all of the candidates go through it or not. So there could be a yeah. class of whatever five, three or four it people. Could be a class of, does it? And, yeah, okay. that's how my that's how my Royal Arch was. It was a, a ten of us. It was a big, big class, and we were kind of all there, kind of watching. Sometimes there was we were part of it. Sometimes we weren't. They tried to make it as much of us tried to make us as much of a part of it as they could, but sometimes there's only room for one guy or two guys. Yeah, the. The terminology that we use is a degree is conferred, right? When you actually have a candidate, you do it. A degree is exemplified or maybe emulated. We, we don't use that word that I recall. Um, when you put it on without a candidate. And communicated is when we tell you what the degree is all about. 
not it may be read or it may be memorized one or the other em, emulated is a david term sorry al <laughs> it is exemplify <laughs> But that's, you know, honestly, I never heard that. That makes sense. I, I hear people talk about exemplifying a degree versus uh, communicating a degree, but I haven't heard the definition between exemplify and conduct. I, that's a great way to define the two. I, I agree with that. Yeah, so we're in, in one of the bodies, we're having a, an official visit um, by the equivalent of the district deputy. Um, and we are required to put on a degree, but we don't have a candidate. So we will exemplify it for him. So in many of the jurisdictions, except Washington, uh, they, you have an inspection period. I know John's familiar with that. And I've, he and I have had long discussions about that. And by the way, John, I'm floating idea to as many people as I can <laughs> in Washington. That may be a resolution here coming up. I may need, I may need <clears throat> your help with. Uh, in York, right, in Canada, or in US, do you have inspection season? So it sounds like you do because you're required to exemplify it. Uh, the expectation in uh, York right usually, uh, at least in uh, chapter and preceptory and council and in conclave, is that uh, when the equivalent of the district deputy comes, there will be a degree. And if you don't have a candidate, you'll exemplify. John, is that the same in the US? Um, oftentimes in the US, we don't want a candidate for, we, for, the, the, with, for the inspection. Because, and I was, uh, I was the grand lecturer in Indiana for four years uh, for a grand chapter. And I was a, a deputy, district deputy for the grand, uh, for the, the grand commandery in Indiana, and when we showed up, you put on the degree, and you were being inspected um, in commandery. In chapter, you were being instructed. So we would stop in the middle of the degree and uh, correct people, and you know, in a very polite way. But we were helping them learn, you know, where they were supposed to be, um, better ways of of delivery. So we didn't want a candidate there because we didn't want to ruin the experience for the candidate. Uh, it really was a training session for, for the cast, um, except for commandery, and they're really military about it. So for them, it was a, it was a getting a score. And uh, the, the commandery that got the highest score every year, you know, got an award at grand sessions and all of that. But uh, yeah, we, very often we, we did not want a candidate there because we wanted to be able to stop and give instruction. Interesting. Okay. Never seen that happen here. Yep. So I was, I was the uh, grand lecturer for four years in Indiana and each year we did a different degree. Uh, the first year we, we went through the Mark master degree and as we were going through it, we were stopping and talking about why people were doing things they were supposed to be doing and, and what the meaning of some different things were, and uh, really talking about the the degree itself. To you know, oftentimes we go through these degrees, and and we we know what we're supposed to do, and we know what we're supposed to say, but we don't spend a lot of time thinking about why are we doing this, how is this relevant to the degree. So that you know, for four years in Indiana, that's what we were doing. Uh, we, as we were going through the degree, we were talking about what what meaning are we trying to to communicate to the to the candidate as we're doing this, Alan, you say you you won't you don't do that. What do you? I'm sorry. What do you mean you don't do that? You, you don't do it with a candidate or without a candidate or some other part. Uh, we I I have never seen an instructed ah. degree that only happens in practice. Okay. So, yeah, it, it's um, so your inspection your inspection is a true inspection. Um. Well, our, what happens when, it, when uh, the equivalent of district deputy comes is uh, he's supposed to see your ritual work, supposed to check your books. Um, and in the, uh, in the chapter, he's supposed to check your book of marks uh, to make sure that everybody's recorded. And um, that's basically 
what it does. I was grand superintendent, which is the equivalent um, in uh, in the Royal Arch. Uh, I can't remember some while back, anyway, ten years maybe. I, I love, sorry, man. I, I love that idea. I, I'm sorry to take over the hosting here a little bit. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I love the idea of inspection. And so I'm, I'm going to kind of beat this up. It was funny. Uh, who, uh, one of the brothers who we have on the show regularly is Amy McCune. When he was deputy, we were going through a transition of where uh, we used to check as, in the craft lodge, as you call it, blue lodge, we say. Uh, we used to check books and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, this, and the meeting many times kind of revolved, or at least the lodge thought it revolved around the deputy. And so they would make sure there were special segments and all that uh, time for the deputy to talk. And, and we went through a transition where we now use Grandview, which is a computerized system. And so all the reports are done online. Everything's online now. You don't really have to check books too much. I mean, you, can do, you can do some digging. And so we were in this weird transition when it was just as my second year was fit, was coming off and then his full two years, they were in this weird transition. So he said, I'm going to, I'm going to go to degrees. I'm not going to go on a meeting night. I want to go on a degree night. And can you, can you actually do the degree work that you say we're supposed to do? And there was a huge backlash from lodges because they said, Oh no, the degree night is for the candidate. We don't want the deputy there. And he said, no, no, I'm just going to come as a visitor. Basically, you know, maybe at the end I'll say five minutes worth of words, but it's not about me. It's about the candidates, about you at the lodge. I want to watch you do what you do best. And it was, it was interesting to see. And now even more fascinating to hear that all the York right guys <laughs> that I know are in those meetings, that's in the Washington, that's exactly what they do in their own meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I, sorry. Long way around to hear that, that, uh, is what we should be doing. I agree that we should be inspecting and verifying. I, I, I like the, I could go either way. I could see it as a, as a here, we're here to watch you and we're not going to interrupt you. I also like the idea of instructional based meetings too, where the deputy or whoever would be there to talk to you about what's not only what we could do better, but what you did wrong. But as John said, once you, when I'm learning ritual, I want to understand the words. And so if there's a word, I think I know I'll, I'll look it up and I'll learn the definition of it or learn the history behind it. And that helps me memorize ritual better. And so if you can explain what's happening in the degree, and how it works, that makes a lot of sense to me. You know, Under that instructional system, the deputy has to know what he's talking about, though, and that's a... <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uh, <clears throat> educating, um, what's often asked, and because I'm not a York right, I don't know the answer or how to describe it, but I'm often asked, what is the difference between York right and Scottish right? Dum, 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 dum. You want this one, Alan, or you want me to do it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take a first kick at it in terms of uh, the York Rite is more along the lines of the Craft Lodge and operates in a similar manner. Um, the Scottish Rite has a predicted set of degrees that it does in a sequence uh, and every year, at least here in this uh, area, they're all the same every year. So every year is a repeat of the previous year. So that's that's the ritual piece of the of Scottish Rite as a, as compared to York Rite. York Rite confers degrees when it has candidates, as does Craft Lodge. So that's. That's a ritual difference. Well, then, well, Scottish Rite being a repeat every year, we always have candidates. So the York Rite doesn't always have a good flow of candidates to do the degree work every year? Or, no. or it's they, just, it's not a scheduled thing like we have. You Scottish are Rite. you are within arm, arm's reach, Stephen. You better watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The... Um, it, it's the same as it is in Craft Lodge. We confer degrees when, when we have candidates and when we can juggle times with people. It's not set on a schedule at all. And yeah, we have candidates. We just, we just got two candidates from Scottish Rite that we're putting through now. Excellent. Yeah, our current um, uh, Grand Secretary, and uh, the immediate past master of Miriam Lodge. 
two guys who have extra names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit more on that. So um, a couple hundred years ago, there was a, there were York Rite Blue Lodges and there were Scottish Rite Blue Lodges. And there still are in the United States uh, a very few, I think three or four down in uh, Louisiana, Louisiana yep. that meet under the Scottish Rite Blue uh, and it's actually not Blue Lodge because their, their colors are red, but uh, the Scottish Rite first three degrees. Um, all of the rest of the United States meets underneath the York Rite first three degrees of masonry. In fact, the Grand Lodge of Indiana was originally chartered as the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted York Masons of Indiana. So uh, at the time that that was all happening, it was very much are you going to be a York Rite Blue Lodge or are you going to be a, a Scottish Rite, you know, Masonic Lodge? Um, York Rite won out, um, at least in the United States. Um, there's, uh, I think, Puerto Rico and, and uh, some Central American and South American countries meet under the Scottish Rite, do the Scottish Rite first three degrees. A lot of Europe meets underneath the Scottish Rite first three degrees. So, a big part of the difference in the United States here is that the entire uh, lodge system that we have set up is the first three of the 12 degrees. So um, in the York Rite, all of the degrees have something in some way, shape, or form tied back to King Solomon's Temple and the Temple Mount. Uh, mm -hmm. In the Scottish Rite, some of those degrees do not have anything to do with, and it, uh, I don't do a lot of Scottish Rite, but some of them I'm sitting there thinking, this hasn't got anything to do with the Temple Mount. Uh, some of them, you know, there's some Egyptian stuff in there. There's some other good information, you know, a good message to learn, but it's not strictly based on the, you know, the story of the Temple and all that I, I it's been when, through. When I joined Scottish Rite, I that we all know the what happens in the third degree in, in Blue Lodge. And then I remember going to the fourth degree in the Scottish Rite and going, you know, wait a minute. This is not at all, you know, mesh up with what just happened in the third degree in Blue Lodge. There's a definite disconnect here. So it's interesting that the York Rite flows more smoothly from that, that lineage. Yeah, especially back east and in, in the eastern United States. Um, there's a little bit of wording different. So every every lodge, every state in the United States has a sovereign blue lodge, but it doesn't answer to anybody. Now they all belong to the conference of grand masters, but the conference of grand masters doesn't tell them what to do, and that's basically the same thing with the um, general grand chapter royal arch masons international. They belong to it, but the general grand chapter doesn't have any authority. It's a membership thing. Um, they belong to that body, but the general grand chapter is very limited on what it can tell you you have to do. Same thing with council. Commandery, on the other hand, is everybody answers to the grand encampment, and they tell you what to do, and you do it. Um, but when the uh, general grand chapter and general grand council started back on the East Coast in the United States, um, they were very influential in the early lodges back east. And so the, their whole system was based on it is this big long story that you're only getting the, the first three chapters of it in, in the local lodge. So um, <clears throat> some of the, you know, the council degrees were stolen from the Scottish Rite at, during that time frame. Uh, you know, there's, there's a bunch of history there, but essentially, what ties the York Rite together is the, the Temple Mount, and that doesn't tie the Scottish Rite together. So, uh, well, as you mentioned, the the uh, Conference of Grand Masters happened to just finish today. Actually, uh, so this, this this today was their last day, and uh, as a as a possible promotional pitch, the Conference of Grand Masters will be in Seattle in twenty twenty one. So maybe we could have our one of our past hosts, uh, most personal Jim Mendoza, come back on. He's actually the chairman for the 2021 Seattle Conference of Grandmasters. We could have him come back on the show and and talk about that. So 
I, I will say that we are definitely going to fact check, fact check. Yeah, I got that right. Uh, <laughs> all of these uh, Scottish Rite details because on an upcoming show, we'll have the Sovereign Grand Inspector General for Washington, illustrious uh, Alvin Jorgensen on the show pretty, pretty soon here too. So uh, we'll, we'll definitely fact check all the Scottish Rite details. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a York Reitman as well, so he can he can talk back and forth. Yeah. So another thing about the Scottish Rite is there are two grand jurisdictions of Scottish Rite in the United States. There's the northern jurisdiction and the southern jurisdiction. And the southern jurisdiction is almost all of the United States. The northern jurisdiction is, uh, I think, Indiana and to the east. Basically the maybe Kentucky to the north. 13 colonies plus a couple, right? Yeah. East, east of the Ohio and north of the Mason-Dixon line, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, they're weird because uh, they <laughs> they replace degrees all the time. Somebody will say, hey, I've got a new degree I've written. Let's put it in in place of the 13th. Okay. And they've wow. got a new 13th. Huh. So, um, yeah. which really bothers the guys because if you learned the degree and you were doing it and they come out a couple of years later and say, we've got a new 13th degree. And it's completely different, whole different story, whole different, nothing about it's the same. You're like, oh, gracious. We'll have to get I some. I actually learned those parts. So. We'll have to get somebody from the northern jurisdiction on then, too. So before we get too far in down the road, Canada. somebody I actually belong to, uh, <laughs> we're, uh, we're running out of time here, unfortunately. So I think we're going to need to wrap up episode two of the uh, Working Tools podcast discussion of York Wright Masonry. So. I want to send it, say a thank you again to our, our special guests, Alan and John. And on behalf of uh, David and Stephen, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you.